When I was a little boy and I would misbehave, my mother would give me Musser. My father's name was Rabbi Melech Shechter, and my sister's name was Sarah. My sister's still alive. Her name is Sarah. So my mother would tell me, your father is a king. He's a Melech. Your sister is a princess, Sarah. My name is Herschel, but she would tell me, so if your father's a king and your sister's a princess, you're also a prince. You have to act accordingly. No bless or bleach. If a person is a, the Gemara has a machloik is hatanoim, whether kol yisod b'neim alochim or not. In principle, all the tanoim agree kol yisod b'neim alochim. But as Baruch says, Bonim atem l'Hashem alakechem, the Rebbein Shalom is the melech ha'olam. Of course, we're all b'neim alochim. The Gemara has a machloik is with respect to refuah b'shabbos, respect to mesadra and the balchav, certain details. But in principle, an idea in hashkot, we are all b'neim alochim, and we all have the obligation to act accordingly. In the days of the Tanoim, not all of the Tanoim lived in Eretz Israel. There was a Tanoim by the name of Rab Masya ben Chorosh who lived in Rome. And the Gemara quotes every so often a statement from the Tan Rab Masya ben Chorosh. So the Gemara, the end of Yuma, quotes him as making the famous statement, Abochi luke kaporahim. There are four categories of how people get kapora. So if a person violated a mitzvah, say, let's say one day the person was lazy, didn't wake up in time, and he didn't recite Kriyashma before the Sovzman Kriyashma. We assume in Shulchan Aruch, the Tasef in Bracha says like that, that the idea of Sovzman Kriyashma, you have to recite Kriyashma before the first quarter of the day, is a diminator. So if the person didn't recite Kriyashma one morning or one evening, he was mevatla mitzvah, I say. So the Gemara says, if a person, or one day a person didn't like fill and a person didn't say, have the one summer to Shabbos. So whenever a person violated a mitzvah, didn't fulfill a mitzvah, I say, and he's chayzeh b'tshuva, he feels bad about it, and he commits himself that he's going to be more careful next time, he's going to be medactic to observe the mitzvah. So, enazaz misham hashem He gets right away, he's forgiven. What if the person violated an Avera and he does tshuva and he commits himself, he's not going to violate this Avera again? So we don't say, Enazaz Misha Mashem Machalo. Tshuva Toila, the fact that he did tshuva accomplishes the beginning of the Kapar, the beginning of the atonement. When Yom Kippurim comes, Kibayam Azei Chapra Alechem, Yom Kippur will be Mechapir. If the person violated an Isa Chomer that has Kores or an Isa's Bezden, so even tshuva with Yom Kippurim are only accomplishing the beginning of the kapara, but the complete kapara is only accomplished when the person suffers Yisur. And what if the person made a chil Hashem? Unfortunately, a lot of Jews make a chil Hashem. They hit the, they hit the first page in the newspapers when they cheat in business, so they do some kind of foil shtick. So then the Gemara says the tshuva with the Yom Kippur, with the Yisurim, are not complete in Mechapra, ad yoyim ha So there are four levels, avoch iluke kapara. If the person violated a mitzvah sesei, that's the lightest level, the easiest way to get kapara. He violated a loy sesei, that's a little more complicated. He violated a loy sesei chomor, that has kores and mitzvah bez, and the abberis are divided into two categories, the ramam at the beginning of Hilchas Chuba has this, uh, but with respect to other dinim as well. There are lav and kalim and lav and chamurim. And then, if a person violated naver and he caused the chil Hashem, that's the most chomer. So there's a sefer, Min Chinuch, that in the yeshivas everybody studies. So Min Chinuch writes, the Gemara also says in the end of Yuma that there are at least two ways to do tshuva. A person could do tshuva in Meira. He's afraid he's going to be punished. He's going to, afraid he's going to lose his other ma'bo. Then there's tshuva me'yahavo. So the Gemara said there's a difference. When a person does tshuva, tshuva in a certain sense is compared to Hatoros Nedorim. We begin Yom Kippur by reciting Kol Nidre, and the old Nusach of Kol Nidre always was that we're Matad Nedorim that we took in the course of the last year. Yom Kippurim Sha'ovar Ad Yom Kippurim Hazeh. The Rabbi Natan, Rashi's grandson, came along and he changed the text of the Kol Nidre, and he said, it's not really a hatar and dorm for the din of dorm that and the shvuas that we took in the course of the last year, the Akrim Purim Sha'ova, Yam Kipurim Hazeb, but rather a declaration in advance. We are Moisa Maido, we're making a declaration that any in a dorm that we plan to take in the course of the coming year, Yam Kipurim Zad, Yam Kipurim Baba Lenu Lataiva, till next year, should all be null and void. The Rabbi Tam changed the text. 
in the yeshiva, we recite the text of the Chayodam, where he combines both of them. But the old Nusach, the Nusach in the days of the Goinim was that Hator, that the Kol Nidre was a Hator Sendorim. Why did we start off uh, Yom Kippurim with Hator Sendorim? So many of the Nusach Svarad Machzorim, they have a passage from the Zohar, which explains why. That Shuvah, in a certain sense, has the same power as Hator Sendorim. The din is when a husband is mefa nidre ishto, or when a father is mefa nidre dito. So the Gemara says, in the dorm are broken from now on, the kana If the daughter or the wife has already violated the, the neder before the husband and before the father is made for the neder, the husband or the, or the father doesn't have the ability to undo that avera. But if a person goes to the bezdin, bezdin is mata the neder, how does bezdin have the right? The husband or the father, so we say, when the married woman takes a nether, al das bailahin oderes. When a young girl takes a nether before the age of 12 and a half, al das abiyahin oderes. So it's self understood that the nether is only binding as long as the husband or the, or the father agrees. Once he doesn't want it, so the nether is no longer binding. But how can a person undo his nether by going to a bezin? By the Catholics, they have such a thing as a papal dispensation. We don't have any such thing. I took a neder. How can the bezin undo my neder? So the Gemara explains, no. Bezin paskins, the neder was a neder betois, and they paskin based on the fact the neder was a neder betois. I didn't realize what I was getting myself into. Or on the Ishacher, I have a whole different mentality now. I was in an angry mood. I was in a too happy mood. I was in a depressed mood. Mm-hmm. Now that I'm in a state of equilibrium, on the Ishacher, and that neder is not binding on me. So whenever the bezin is mata the neder, either based on Pesach, I didn't realize what I'm getting myself into. It's a neder betois, but based on charate, I have charate that I ever took the neder, ani ishacher, I'm a different person. So then the neder was never binding in the first place on me. It was binding on a different person. I'm a different person now. But the neder was a neder betois, so it's not binding. So the Zohar says that just like where there is an institution that the Torah Shabbat Pet tells us about Hatoris and Dorm. In the Chumash, we only read about Hafara, that the father and the husband could be made for the Nedorim because the wife takes the Nedor, Al Das Bailahin Oderis. And the young daughter before the age of 12 and a half also takes the Nedorim, Al Das Avia. That's why the husband or the father is a Balabas, to be made for the Nedor, Mikan Allahabah. But the Bezdan is Nishkin Balabas, Amai Nedorim. So that when they paskan, the nether is mutter now, they're paskan because it's a nether betoris or on the ishacher. So then it comes out, the whole nether is the chacham mezoikar and nether meikor. It comes out, there never was such a nether. So just like hatoris and dorim, all year long, has the ability to undo a nether, oikar and nether meikor, and even if the individual already violated the nether and he deserves to get malchus, if Bezdin will be mat to the nether after he violated it, he won't get the malchus. So too, when the person does tshuva, so the Gemara says that tshuva can undo the whole avera and be considered as if he never did the avera b'mezid. So to what extent does a tshuva undo the avera? So the Gemara in the end of Yuma says a difference between tshuva me'yira and tshuva me'yahavu. If the person does a lower level of tshuva me'yira, he's afraid it's going to be punished in Bezno Shamayla. So then, or he's embarrassed that people uh, look down upon him because he's a balavera, he's a shegitz. So then the Gemara says, once he does the tshuva, zedonos, the averas that he did, the mezid, are considered as if he did a b'shegik, but it's still an avera. Zedonos are, are considered as if he did b'shegik. But if the person does a higher level of tshuva, tshuva meyahavo, so then the zedonos, the averas that he did, the mezid, are considered as if he did it as if he did mitzvahs. Donas Tansan Log is a chuyas. It's considered as if he did mitzvahs. So in the Sefer Minchas Chinach, he points out, and Rab Salvechik and many think that the Minchas Chinach must be correct on this. It makes a lot of good sense that the Abachi Luke Kapor, that the Tana Ramasya Ben Chorash formulated, and the Gemara quotes it in the end of Yuma, that's only if the person is doing tshuva meyira, the lower level of tshuva. But if he does tshuva meyahava, then Zdonis Asanok is Zuchuyas. All the Averis that he did will propel him now to be doing more mitzvahs because he looks back and he's embarrassed. Every time he looks back, he's ashamed of the fact that he did such Averis. The Rabban Shalom is the Balabas over the whole world. How can he do such, such improper acts? So the, the Averis that he did in the past will 
encourage him now, each time he's more embarrassed over the fact that he has such, uh, he has violated such averis, this will propel him into the future to do mitzvahs, says, Don't astas and look, he's then all the arboch, iluke, kapora fall away. And we assume that the, the tshuva works without the yisurim and without, without the yom kippurim and without the yom hami, so you don't need all of that. It's interesting when we dive in the ilo. We say vidui, same as the other tefillahs on Yom Kippur, but then we add a new theme that we never said, the whole Yom Kippur. We say more than once in Nila, lama nechta me'oshek yadena, we should stop stealing. What, everybody cheats on income tax. There are some people in the United States who don't steal. There are some people, unfortunately, a lot of people in business cheat. But a lot, there are people in business who do not cheat. There are honest people. Everybody says the same lotion. We should stop stealing. What kind of a lotion is that? It applies to everybody. So Salvech so begins to explain that we say, the body belongs to our Kodesh Baruch Hu. All of our talents belong to our Kodesh Baruch Hu. And really, if, I, if it belongs to our Kodesh Baruch Hu, it's Gezel. Whenever we use our body to do our virus, it's, a, it's an act of gezel. That, that's not proper. We are, we are decent people. We don't do gezel, but we don't realize that our body and all, our, all of our talents don't belong to Everything belongs to our Kodesh Baruch Hu. So what we're saying in effect, when we say, just saying, we should stop doing our virus. Every time a person does an avera, it's really gezel. We believe, the Pesach tells us, who are sonu, the lo anachnu, HaKadosh Baruch Hu created us, so we belong to him. And the Pesach and Chumash describes HaKadosh Baruch Hu as konei shamayim ba'oretz. What do you mean konei shamayim ba'oretz? Rashi has two translations, Rashi in his commentary on Chumash. One interpretation, he gives konei shekinein, HaKadosh Baruch Hu created, he set up the whole world. And the other pshat is konei, he acquired ownership. Because the Rabbanu Shalom created the whole world, that's why he's the Balabas, every, everything belongs to him. So it's an act of gezel. If you use anything from the world, from the purpose of Averis, you're really violating uh, an Isra of gezel. HaKadosh Baruch Hu created us all. B'Tzelem Alekim, the Mishnah says, Chaviv Adam Shenivri B'Tzelem, Chaviv Nisol Shenikru Banim Lamokim. Most of the Mepharshim assume Pashib Shat in the Pasik says Chaviv Adam applies even to the Um Asylum. Everybody was created with Tzalem Alekim. And Chaviv and Yisrael Shanikru Banam Lamakim, that's Tzalem Alekim Square. Banam Lamakim, the children carry over the DNA from the parents. So we have even a deeper degree of Banam Lamakim. All the Um Asylum have Tzalem Alekim, and the Rain Soul have Banam Lamakim. The Kuzari, Rabbi Yudah Levi, the Kuzari understood the Mishnah differently. He thinks that Chaviv Adam Shaniv B'Tselem only refers to Adam Arishan, was created with Tselem Alekim. And that Tselem Alekim was only transmitted to one of his children. He didn't transmit it to all. And the Pesach in the beginning of Divri HaYomim says, Adam Shei Senesh Kena Mahalal Al Yered, he goes down from Adam Arishan. He transmitted the Tselem Alekim only to one of his children. And Shei only transmitted to Enosh, and Enosh Kikena Mahalal Al Till Noyach and till Avram Avinu, till Avram. Avram had two sons, had more than one son. He only transmitted the Tzalem Alekim to Yitzchak and to Yaakov. And Yaakov was Mitosu Shlema. All of the children of Yaakov have the Tzalem Alekim. That's a Mechudish Dikeshita that the Tzalem Alekim only applies to the Nai Yisrael. The Yom Yisraelim don't have it. We usually don't understand the Mishnah like that. So we have a Pasuk and the Teichacha that we just read last Shabbos. That's a Takonis Ezra, to read the Teichach in Kisava, the second Shabbos before Rosh Hashanah, and to read the Teichach in the Chukosai, the second Shabbos before Shavuos. And the Gemara says, Ezra, beginning of the Baisheni period, Ezra and Sefer made this Takona, and the Kavana that he had applies uh, very much so to us today. Teich Lashana Vekila Loseha, the old year should end with all of its curses. Teich Lashana Bechasad, the new year should begin with all of its blessings. So we read one of the psukim in the Torah and Kisove reads, "Vahalachta bedrachav." And the Rambam writes, "We should imitate the ways of God." Why should we imitate the ways of God? Sometimes a little girl imitates her mommy, so she puts on a sheitel, she puts on a big bonnet, and she wears high heels, and she gives pets to the younger children. That's a definition of a mommy giving pets or screaming at the younger children. 
So the little girl imitates the mommy. Someday she probably will be a mommy, so she's imitating now. Or the little boy imitates a doctor. He makes believe he's taking your heartbeat and your blood pressure, whatever. Someday maybe he will become a doctor. Why should we imitate the ways of God? We're planning someday to take over. The Rav is going to retire and he's looking from a Mali Mokham. We should imitate the ways of God. If a person makes believe that he's someone whom he isn't, he's going to get a nervous breakdown. What kind of Mishigas is that? Why should we why should we imitate the ways of God? So the answer is given by the Chomish itself. Because God created us all, but Salam Alakim, and He instructed us to preserve that Salam Alakim, Allah the Bidrachim. Not that we should imitate someone or something whom we are not. We were created that Salam Alakim, and we are created as Banam Lamakim. So Kodesh Bochu instructs us we should imitate the ways of God. That's the way to preserve the Salam Alakim. And then the next verse it continues, Varo Kalami Ha'aretz. All the nations of the world will see that we have succeeded in preserving our Tzalem Alekim, Kishem Hashem Yo. Nikra Olecha, that we have succeeded in preserving our Tzalem Alekim. And they can do the same. The Ummah Salem were also created the Tzalem Alekim. So the Pasuk continues, the Yoru Mimeko, they will learn from us how to act with Yerashem Ayim. The Nei Yisrael are referred to as B'ni B'chari Yisrael. Usually I have, we have nine children. So the, my oldest child just married off her second child. So the oldest child is always expected to help the parents raise their younger children. So B'nai Yisrael are referred to in the Chumash as B'ni B'chari, so we're the oldest child from all the Yom Asar, and we're the oldest child. So HaKadosh Baruch expects us to be Or Lagoim. The Nabi Yeshaya refers to B'nai Yisrael as Or Lagoim, to light a light unto the nation, light unto the nations with respect to what? Respect to Shabbos and Kashvas and Taras HaMishpacha, that's only for B'nai Yisrael. That's not for the Yom Asarilam. Or Lagoim means as far as, work, as far as honesty, integrity, uh, work ethic, and so on. As far as Tzalem Alakim, what we have in common with Yom Asarilam is Tzalem Alakim. So we're supposed to be Or Lagoim in that area. Not as far as Shabbos is only for the Jews. Tavis HaMishpoch is only for the Jewish people. So that's what the Pesach instructs us. We should go in the ways of Hashem in order to preserve the Tzalem Alakim. We are Rabbanim, Kol Yisrael B'nei Malachim. We are Noshim Chashuvim. We have Tzalem, the Yom Yisraelim also have Chashivas, they have Tzalem Alakim. The Yom Yisraelim have a greater degree of Tzalem Alakim. That's called Banim Lamach. We have the same DNA as the Rabbanu Shalolam. And we shouldn't, because of this responsibility, we have to be careful to no bless oblige. We have to act uh, properly. Exactly how did the Bnei Yisrael act as a Or Lagoim? So that changed over the years. There's a Medrash on the Pesach in the beginning of Pasha's Vayeshev. Vayeshev Yaakov Beretz Migure Yavi Beretz Kenon. What do you mean Beretz Migure Aviv in the country in Eretz Kenan, where his father and his grandfather lived? Yitzchak Avinu, Yaakov Avinu, they lived in, in Eretz Kenan, the Eretz Migure Aviv, Melosh and Gor, Gor Shama. So the Medrash has an additional level of interpretation on the Pasuk of Eretz Mugure Oviv, that Avram Migayeres, or Anoshim, is Sora Migayeres, as Anoshim. The Pasuk says when Avram Avinah moved to Eretz Yisrael, when the first time, when Yibar Shalom told him, Lech Lecha, Miyat Zecha, Mimelad Zecha, go to Eretz Yisrael. So it says that Avram Avinu came to Eretz Yisrael with Anefesh Asha Osu Bechor. What does that mean? People can create human beings. Anefesh Asha Osu. So Pashib Shat perhaps means with the uh, servants that he purchased. The slavery existed in the world at that time. Now it doesn't exist anymore. Lincoln freed all the slaves. But uh, in the days of Avram Avinu, there were slaves. So it could be Pashib Shat. And never Shasha Asa means that they acquired ownership of it. So the Chazal have an additional level of interpretation. Not that never Shasha Asa that they acquired ownership of, but rather the non-Jews and Avram Avinu had convinced of monotheism and he converted them. Avram Mikayeres Anoshim Misorim Mikayeres Es Anoshim. So here the Pasuk says in the opening Pasuk in Pasha's Vayeshev, Vayeshev Yaakov Eretz Mugure Aviv, just like his father Yitzchak and his father, his father Avram Avinu, Avram Yitzchak and Yankov, all three were in the Geras business. They were all preaching monotheism to the public and they were trying to get people to convert to monotheism. At that time, the Jewish religion only consisted of Emuna, Eretz Yisrael is the Eretz and of Cheres, the chosen land, and mitzvah to live in Eretz Yisrael, not to intermarry. 
And to have a moon in HaKadosh Baruch, Lies Lachol Alekim, Lezarach Acharecho, the Gemara understands you shouldn't intermarry, because if you intermarry, the children will not be Jewish. And you have to perform the bris mila. The bris mila, this, this was the whole package deal of, of Judaism. So the, until, the days of Ar- until the days of Yitzchak, Avram Yitzchak, until the days of Yaakov, Avram Yitzchak and Yaakov, the first half of his life, they were involved in Megure Aviv and being Megayar non Jews. But then after Yaakov Avina had all of the Yud Beish Shvatim, then the Pasuk says he, was, he understood from HaKadosh Baruch Hu that he should no longer go out actively proselytizing the Umas Oilam. He should just raise his children properly and thereby serve as an Orla Goyim. So from that time on, we are Orla Goyim in a passive way, not no longer actively engaged in proselytizing the Umas Oilam. Well, we raise our children and we try to serve as Orla Goyim. In that, in that fashion. These are some of the ideas that we have to have in mind when we want to do tshuva. The Rambam has 10 prokhim on Hilchas tshuva, very interesting. Rav Solveitchik uh, said in his family, the practice used to be that each day of Aseris and tshuva, they would go through one of the 10 chapters, and they thought perhaps that's why the Rambam divided it into 10 chapters, because he have Aseris and tshuva, one chapter per day, maybe not, but that was a suggestion. So in Perak Yud, in the last chapter, the Ramam speaks about the Mishnah and Pirkei Ovis, where the Tanoim told us the beginning of Pirkei Ovis, that Al-Tiyu Kavodim Ham Shamshen Sarav Al-Manasl Kabul Pras, we shouldn't do mitzvahs out of Yira Shamayim, because if we do the mitzvahs, we get rewarded, and if we do Averis, we will be punished. Rather than do that, we should be It does mean that there's no reward. We believe in reward and punishment. The three brachas that we recite and the Musaf Dikesh Man Esra and Rosh Hashanah, Malchus Zechrena Shefras. So that's what Zechrenis is all about. HaKadosh Baruch knows everything that's happening and he's going to reward the tzaddikim and punish the Rishon. That's what Zechrenis is all about. And Zechar B'Yonish is only meaningful, it only is possible because we have Bechir Ochavshis. If man doesn't have any so he shouldn't be held responsible for the Averis that he does. He should, doesn't, he shouldn't deserve any reward for doing any mitzvahs. That's a big issue today. Most of the psychologists don't believe in Bechirochavshis, but that's an Iker in our religion. So that's what the Ramam emphasizes in Hilchas Tshuva. We absolutely do believe in Bechirochavshis, and not only Bechira. The Ramam starts that chapter of Rishus L'chalodim Nesuna. Instead of saying Bechira, we call it Bechirochavshis, the Perakei in Hilchus Tshuva, the Ramam starts off with Shus. Shus means, the Chira means when you're given a choice. The parents give you a choice. You want to go to this university, to that university. So the child says, I don't want to go to any university. I want to sit and learn in the yeshiva. Well, the parents give him a choice. You want to go to this yeshiva, that yeshiva. He says, doesn't want to go to yeshiva. Wants to go to Goyeshiva University. You can choose to do something, an option that was never presented to you. That's more than Bechira. Bechira means, in Eretz Yisrael, the elections is called the Bechirot. Bechira means you are given a choice, A, B, or C, and you choose one of the choices. Here, the Ramam calls it Rishus. We have the ability to think out our own, just like God created the world, Yesh Me'ayin. Man was created, but Tzalem Alekim, that means all of our decisions can be Yesh Me'ayin. We have a lot of different considerations, what's more comfortable, and how will, be, how will we lead a very relaxed life but uh, the, the consideration that we have in mind don't force us to make a decision in one direction or the other. This is what Bechir Chavshis is all about. So the Rambam in Perak Yud speaks about doing mitzvahs me'avo as opposed to doing mitzvahs me'ira. So the Rambam describes it, Oisehem, what does it mean to do mitzvahs me'avo? It's hard to love HaKadosh Baruch Hu. We don't know too much about the Rebbe Shalom. How can you develop a love for HaKadosh Baruch Hu? So the Ramam says, what do you mean? You do mitzvahs me'ava, osa emes b'mpnei shuhu emes. The seif ha'toi v'lavo big lalo. The schar will be, you'll get reward. We believe in reward. When the Tana says, atil kavodem ham sham shirin sarav, amonos l'kavod pras, it doesn't mean that there's no reward and punishment. There certainly is reward and punishment. It says in the Chumash, in the beginning to the end. But that shouldn't be our motivation for doing mitzvahs. Seif ha'toi v'lavo big lalo. We will be rewarded in the end, but we shouldn't have that in mind. When we do mitzvahs, doing mitzvahs, me'avim means oisah emes, who emes. We know that that's the correct thing to do. 
We know there's such a thing as the categorical imperative, that there are some things that you know are absolutely correct. This is the only way to go. The, the categorical imperative, as far as the Jewish people are concerned, is what we read about on Rosh Hashanah, the Akedah. HaKadosh Baruch instructs the Aram Avinah to do something that's absolutely immoral and absolutely doesn't make any sense whatsoever, and it contradicts, apparently contradicts, what he told Avram Avinu previously. He told him, Your son, Yitzchak, will carry over the tradition of monotheism. Then he tells him, and bring him as a carbon oil. Avram Avinu doesn't ask any kashas. He understood the nevua, and it was clear, crystal clear, and he's prepared to take his son on the Arcadia. Then in the middle, after he ties up his son, he's about to shech his son. The Malach comes, and he tells him he should bring the Ayoli Oila instead. He shouldn't shech his son. Avram Avinu does exactly what he's instructed. After he does what he's obligated to do, whatever Kodesh Bocha tells you to do, that's absolute obligation. That's the categorical imperative. No two ways about it. We don't give the Rabbanu Shalom a grade. We don't give him an A, B, C, F. We don't grade the Rabbanu Shalom. Whatever he does is ethical and proper and just. We believe that's Tzidik Adin. We accept the HaKadosh Baruch Whatever he tells us to do, we have to do. After Ram Avina does what he's instructed, then he says, I don't understand what you told me to do. First, you told me Kibyitzvah Karel Chazera. Then you tell me take him for the Akedah. Then you tell me, stop. Everything contradicts everything else. But he didn't ask the kashas in advance. Because each time when HaKadosh Bochel told him in person, take your son for the Akedah, it was clear. When he tells him, don't shecht your son, everything was clear. So first he does what HaKadosh Bochel instructs him. And only after he does it, then he asks, please explain to me what was this all about. We have the same in the Haftarah Parshas Bahar. The Nabi Yirmiya was alive right before the Churban by Yisrishan, and he went with Bnei Yisrael into Golis Bavam. So as the Babylonian armies are about to conquer all of Eretz Yisrael, he gets a Nevoa <coughs> from HaKadosh Baruch Hu, that his cousin who lives in Anosos is broke, he's in need of money, he's gonna to come to ask you to buy his field in Anosos, you buy the field and pay a lot of money. The real estate is worthless. The Babylonian armies are about to conquer the whole land. They're going to send everybody into Golas Bavel. What good is it now? He's going to buy the field. And he says, make sure you fill out two documents, a Sefer Agola and a Sefer Achosim, in two stories, Ashtar Mekusha and Ashtar Pashat. So Yirmiya doesn't ask any kashas. His cousin comes and he pays the full amount and he writes the story. After he does it, then he says, why in the world did he tell me to buy the real estate? It's worthless. But he doesn't ask the cash in advance. A lot of modern people today think that they're so brilliant and so intelligent. They judge their banishlam. Every time a mitzvah comes up, they decide, does it make sense? Does it not make sense? Or a mitzvah with their abanam. Does the mitzvah, the, the, does the din that the rabbis introduced, does it make sense? Does it not make sense? Does it make sense? They're not going to do the mitzvah. That's not what it means. Kabbalah salmach shamayim. On Rosh Hashanah and Musa, we say three brachas in the middle of the Shmanes, and Malchias and Chanes and Shem. Malchias means that the Jewish religion is not a democracy. We don't have any say over here. It's a, HaKadosh Baruch is the Melech, and we Malchus Aleinu. Whatever he tells us to do, we have to do, and that's just, and that's, and that's decent <coughs> by definition. That's considered moral. We can't judge Rabbi Shalom some of the mitzvahs that he tells us are moral, some are immoral. Morality is defined by HaKadosh Baruch Hu. These are some of the lessons of Rosh Hashanah. Malchias means HaKadosh Baruch Hu is the Melech, and we make Kabbalah, Malchus, so we do all of the mitzvahs. We have a right to ask a question after we do all the mitzvahs. One of the psukim that we recite before we blow Shefer is, Tuv Tamidas Lamdeni Kibi Mitzvah Secha Amonti, right before the Baptiqe blow Shefer. So the Me'iri interprets Pshat in the Pasuk, Tuv I, I'm going to do the mitzvahs. I observe all the mitzvahs. Give me mitzvahs secha ha'amanti. I believe in the mitzvahs. I do the mitzvahs. I don't ask any questions. But after I finish performing all the mitzvahs, I ask HaKadosh Baruch do me a favor, tuv tamadas lamdeni. Please explain to me what was this mitzvah all about. Ki be mitzvah secha means ki despite the fact, the word ki, the Meiri points out every so often, the Chumash and Tanakh, the word ki means a lot of times it means because, and a lot of times it means despite the fact that. 
in spite of the fact that the mitzvah is echem monte, but I'd like to understand what I'm doing. After you do the mitzvah, then you have a right to ask, please explain to me what it was all about. But you have no right to ask questions in advance. That's what Malchus is all about. On Rosh Hashanah, Adam Arishim was created. We say on Rosh Hashanah, Hayom HaRasalem. Today is the birthday of the world. It means it was the day on which Adam Arishim was created. The first five days of Sheshis Mebreshis were prehistoric because there was nobody there. There was HaKadosh Bochu. There were Malachim were created before Adam Arishim. But there were no human beings around. So the first day of, uh, of history was the sixth day of Sheshit's Mebereshit. That's when Adam Arishim was created. And HaKadosh Baruch confronts him and he says, Vaitzav Hashem Alekim Al Adam. Same day he created him, he gave him the mitzvahs that he has to observe. Rabban Azor, Gilei Arash, Vichazdam, and Meitam Anachai, and so on. All the various mitzvahs he was instructed. So Rosh Hashanah is the day on which Adam Arishim was Mechabal on Malchus Shamayim. So that's the day on which we, the descendants of Adam Arishim, should also be Mechabal on Malchus Shamayim. So Chorinus means HaKadosh Baruch is aware of everything that's happening in the world. He rewards the tzaddikim who do mitzvahs and he punishes the rishoyim because there is Bechira Chavshis. We believe in Bechira Chavshis. We don't accept what the psychologists uh, say. I remember years ago, there was a book review in, in the Sunday New York Times. So uh, someone sent a letter to the editor in, in connection with one of the books. There's a book on psychology. So someone sent a letter, the book on psychology left off with a couple of kashas. How can it be that there's no Bechira Chavshis? Uh, if this, that, and the other thing. So someone sent a letter to the, maybe there is Bechira Chavshis. Maybe there is such a thing as Bechira No, it's Lo Bo Bechejmon. By us, that's the ABC of our Amunah. We believe in Bechira Chavshis. That's what it means, Tzalem Alakim. When was created, the Tzalem Alakim, just like HaKadosh Baruch Hu created the world, Yesh Me'ayin. So man has the ability to make decisions, Yesh Me'ayin. We should all realize that we are Banim Lamakam. We were all created the Tzalem Alakim, and we should have the dignity, preserve our dignity by preserving the Tzalem Alakim. Allah the Bidrachov. In Shoifros, the third bracha, Shoifros, is based on the idea that in Tanakh, on the occasion of Maimon Hasina, there was a Gilu Shechina, and there was Tkia Shoifer. And in different places in Tanakh, Tkia Shoifer represents Nevua, that there is communication between HaKadosh Baruch Hu and man. Certain philosophers developed the idea, logically, it's impossible. How can infinite God have communication with the finite man? You have a good kasha, okay, but it happened. We know that it happened. We believe one of the 13 principles of faith of our religion is that there is such a thing as nevua. There can be, there has been communication from HaKadosh Baruch Hu to man, and included in this Iker and Amuna that there's such a thing as Nevoah, there's communication from God to man, is the Iker of Tefillah, that there could be communication between man and God. We daven HaKadosh Baruch Hu Shemeh Tefillah, Dech Kabbos Yavoyu. We daven HaKadosh Baruch Hu listens to the prayers. Sometimes he answers our prayers in the positive, sometimes in the negative, but he always listens to the prayers. There can be, and there is, communication in both directions. God can communicate with men, and man communicates, and man can communicate with God. And we believe in Hashem Echad, Yichud Hashem. Yichud Hashem doesn't only mean monotheism, one God, as opposed to the Trinity, as opposed to other Abadizaris, where they believe in many gods. It means more than that. Yichud Hashem means the one and only God who is in control of everything in the whole wide world. We should only pray to Him. We usually don't do that. When people want something done, so they do so much ishtadlus. Speak to this person, the other person, the other person. You have to do ishtadlus. But you should, there's a chiv to do ishtadlus, but then you have to daven to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Whatever ishtadlus a person does, the Gemara says, what should a person do to become wealthy? What should a person do to be blessed with children? The Gemara says different things, what should you do? And then the last thing is, it should be mispala to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. We don't place enough emphasis on, on the davening. That's Yichad Hashem. Yichad Hashem means not only we believe in one God as opposed to more than one God. We believe that God is in full control of everything in the world. These are some of the ideas we have to have in mind uh, this year and every year. And Rosh Hashanah and all year long. We should all be blessed with Tich Lashana Bikila Laseha, Tochal Shana Bikhasel. Should all be blessed with Xiva Maxima Taiva, a good Gibbenchyar.